Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my video, and today we'll be doing the part one of the build video for the Beast X build using the Tornado Motors. So let's just get into it for the parts. Let's do a quick overview for the Beast X frame here. This is the bottom plate already assembled, as well as the little top pod with the GoPro TPU mount that um, just goes on here. Basically just sticks on there and it gives you a 40 degree mount. And I'll leave a link down below to my full review of this frame if you're interested in that. Check that out. Um, for the video transmitter, I'll be using the FX795T-2, which is pretty cool there. Uh, switchable between 25 and 20 milliwatts is the version I have. I'll be showing you how to solder on a pigtail, taking off the SMA connector. So I can use the TBS stub antenna out the back there. I've got the Runcam Rotoriot Edition Swift, which is basically just Runcam Swift with the GoPro 2.5 lens, except it comes pre-installed from the factory for the same price, so that's really nice, and you get the cool logo and all black there. I've got the X-Racer F303 version 3.1. It's pretty much my favorite flight controller. It's got the MPU 6000 gyro. It can run 8K, 8K beta flight, the newest, so, you know, it's not very sensitive to noise, which is good, and it's just very solid board for me. i using the little Maytech Mini PDB that came with the frame. It's pretty simple, but it's got 5 and 12 volt regs on board, which is all we need. I'll be running, well first let me show you, I'll be running the Brother Hobby Tornado T2 2206-2300 kV motors, you can see there. And I also did an um, individual review on these, which I will also link down below if you're interested in them, so I'm excited to try those out. And for the ESCs, we've got the DYS XSD 20 amp. And now you may be wondering why I'm deviating from my favorite XS 20 amp. Well, these are the exact same ESCs. Set, let me find it. There's one capacitor up here, that top right capacitor right there. All they did was remove that from the factory, print out a new sticker, and slap it on and sell it as a new AC. You're not fooling me, DYS, but I'm pretty sure these are the exact same price, anyways, and they're D shot ready without that capacitor. So let's, you know, give them a shot. D shot, huh? For the props, I'll be using the uh, DAL Cyclone V2. These are the T5046. C props. These are my favorite props right now. Um, I'm testing out a few different ones, but these V2 Cyclones are just amazing for what I found. So those are the parts. So let's get into the build, starting to mount the motors to the frame, and then soldering up the ESCs and the PDB. All right, so let's get started, and first we're going to mount our motors to the frame. And now these motors, they come with one set of screws, and they are just, they are designed for four millimeter thick arms because you don't want too many threads to poke through because if the um, screws go too far up into the motors they can um, collide with the windings in there and if they short out on those and they short it it's not you're not gonna have a fun time you're gonna have smoke so make sure depending on what arm and what screws and what motors you're using that the screws do not go too far up into touch the windings but on these there's actually quite a bit of extra room before the windings it's like um, they designed them that way uh, who would who would imagine that but um these screws be perfect for this so make sure you use some loctite on these and just i believe it's a 2.5 millimeter um hex allen key on this and these motors are all clockwise threaded so it does not matter which way we put them in um it does not matter front left front right they're all exactly identical here We'll change the direction later with the ESCs, with the wiring there. Just a little bit of Loctite there. I'm only going to be using two screws here. And I'm actually not going to be soft mounting. Because with all the soft mounting, everyone, it seems like you have to soft mount your quad these days. But I want to see if I can get a quad flying just as good without soft mounting. So just give these a good tweak there. Nice and tight down. And you should be good. And once again, you can just... Verify by looking through the side that the screws do not come up. These ones don't even come up past the threads there. So that should be good. And that motor is mounted. There we go. So let's get to the other three. All right, there we go. All four motors are mounted. And hopefully none of you had trouble with that. You know, it's really simple. Just two bolts into each motor. Use Loctite. Give them a good tweak. Don't over tighten them. You don't want to crush the carbon fiber and break that. But should be pretty good there with a good amount of tightness. So next we're going to move on to the ESCs. And the PDB here. So this PDB is uh, it, it doesn't bolt on with the you know holes through the stack. It's just kind of going to sit here with double-sided sticky tape. 
which is totally fine. So the battery pads are on the side out the back. So if we're turn this around for you, this will be the back because this is where the XT60 um, loops around the zip ties there. So the battery comes out the back. So the ESCs are just going to sit on the arm right about here. And then you can wires can come around these bolts to the PDB. And then I'll go right there and we should have enough room left for our wires. And I'll probably cut the heat shrink back on these a little bit so we can get closer in because I like to keep the motor wires as long as possible. So I can get that just a little bit longer, but we are going to have to cut them pretty short here. So for that, first I'm going to get to cutting the heat shrink back a little bit. Don't go too far. You don't want to expose the wires. And be careful not to clip any of the existing wires. There we go. I just took a little strip off. Which one was it? This one. So now we should be able to get them a little bit closer to give us a little bit more room for our motor wires. But these are still going to have to be very short on this 200 millimeter frame. And you can make these a little bit too long um, for your ESC if you want them to have a little bit of slack. But I'm just going all out for the straight up close look. And this is where some people who do this before they mount their motors are going to be laughing at me because it's easier to strip and work with the wires when they're not on the bolted to the arm. You can move the motor, but a sharp tool like that will get those string, um, stripped real well. So uh, let's tin them. This here. all the way through the wire there. Okay. Then we'll take our ESC and we will tin that as well. applying heat quickly and then putting some solder in is good and be careful sometimes uh, solder can come out from the back there so that's good all right now I'm going to take some of this double-sided sticky tape here all right I'm just going to cut it to the size of the ESC here there we go save that piece and there's actually this little capacitor in the back that sticks up so I'm actually going to make it a little bit shorter so that when this lines up with it it's going to make it sit level so I'm not going to be covering that part. there we go and also take once I get these wood I need to do it yet but some of the heat shrink I'm going to slide over to cover these contacts and then I'm just going to kind of stick it down on there just like that. And that should line our wires up perfectly and you can see that holds it down, but I will add a zip tie later. And of course, me being me, that's not gonna work. We need to put the heat shrink on now. Make sure you get the joints, the wires to settle down against the pad all the way down, not just on top of it. There we go. All right, we are back, and I couldn't get that heat shrink down over the edge of the arm because apparently uh, it's sized perfectly for the ESCs, and they probably included it because they expected you to cut the stock heat shrink off and then put this new piece on instead of just adding an end cover to cover the solder joints, which is what I do. So I had to go get some um, larger clear heat shrink I had. So now that that's on, I can just shrink this down. A lot of people leave these bare, but honestly, I just like to have the little extra protection against water or shorts. Just, uh, just we drop something on it. It's just a little good safety. Now that that's good, now we can stick it back down on the pad. See, and that's not going anywhere. And that's a nice clean setup right there with our wire straight. And we can finish up the other three. All right, there we go, all finished up with the ESCs and motors there. Just repeating the same things I showed you. And I will be putting a uh, zip tie around each one of these just loosely. 
don't tighten it too down the tape will hold it but just in case you know there's something that could possibly rip it off that'll just hold it down even better looking pretty good so far so next we're going to be into mounting the PDB here which is going to go this way and for that I should just double side tape on there and our XT60 is just going to come right here and that's actually going to sort of hard mount to the frame because if you see this little you see this little cut out here um, the XT60 sits here and then these slots right here on either side you want to zip tie around and tighten that down so it can't go anywhere so it's stress relief for the cables as well as it's a nice mounting place to keep your um, power wires out of your props if it moves around so we're only going to need a real short extension on the XT60 but we need to make an extension nonetheless All right, I've got some 12 gauge wire here because I, use, I always use 12 gauge on mini quad builds to handle the high current that these produce. So this only needs to be, really, I mean this can kinda, it's only gonna have to be, it's gonna be super short and probably stiff. Um, only like, I don't know, 3 centimeter, 2 centimeters long. Does not need to be very long. Just do the other one up, exact same, and I'm going to be doing both of them in black. Won't be doing a red one because it, uh, you know, obviously doesn't color the insulation doesn't matter. It just look a little bit better this way, I think. So stripping these, this will be for the PDB end, and this will be for the XT60 end. I just like to, on this thicker insulation, just kind of pinch a little bit with the cutters and then just twist it. Don't pinch too much or else you'll um, cut a lot of the wires underneath. There we have that. So let's tin these bad boys. Turn my temperature up. Just in case you're wondering, I'm now at 420 degrees Celsius. That's just the temperature I use. I'm trying to get this in shot for you. So heat up the cup and then just put some solder in there and let it flow. You don't need to put too much in because I like to put some on the wire as well. There we go and you'll see it. It flows nice there. So now let's tin these. sure you get solder to flow all the way through the wire so it requires a lot of heat but you'll see the flux start to sort of burn around the edges and turn brown when you get it hopefully like that yeah there we go. that one's perfect and that's going to be really hot for a while since it's so small so we can do the other one while we're at it You can see, hopefully, there's some very nice looking joints. Yeah, you can't really see it in the lighting, but there's no solder um, touching between them, obviously. You definitely don't want that. And these are going to be super rigid now. But they should just line straight up to the battery pad, which is good. So I'm going to put some heat shrink over these because touching down, they're not going to be touching the carbon, um, but you definitely don't want anything shorting. So put some black heat shrink over there, and then let's tin these pads and put it on there. All right, the PDB is all done here with the XT60 just up to there. So this is super simple extension. So basically, we're going to take some more double-sided sticky tape. Just gonna use some more of this, and I'm gonna stick it down there. Everything should be good. There shouldn't be any shorts, especially in this. Will block anything else, and it's the perfect size width for that. Now I'll just stick in there, and our XT60 will zip tie around this part right here. 
And then all our power wires from our ESCs can be nice and simple, just positive, negative, right there to the corners of the board. So let's stick this down. There we go. And this stuff is super strong against the carbon, super strong against the PDB, so we kind of only get one shot at this. Make sure it's lined up. And go for it. There we go. Well, it actually provides a little soft mounting. <laughs> But yeah, and just once again, make sure if you're using both black wires, even red and black, that your negative goes to negative. Can't even see it anymore. Oh yeah, negative, negative, and positive goes to positive on your XT60. So that's good now. So let's tin up all these pads, and we'll start adding the ESC power wires. I've added the zip ties around the XT60 and the ESCs, um, but you have to be careful about the one around the XT60 because it has to be very small or else this um, aluminum part here is not going to fit, but you can see the little knob because I wanted it flat against there, so you might have to get creative or kind of shave away a little bit like I did. So next, and I've also pre-tinned all of the PDB pads as you can see there. So next, let's just get two of these. Let's just take these two over here and cut them. And the pads right next to the main input leads are for the positive lead, there's a positive pad right next to it. And for the negative lead, there's a negative um, pad right next to it. So if you do bridge those two together, it's not the end of the world. It actually doesn't really matter, but it's just nicer to keep them separate and mine are so separate. But if it does happen, don't worry about it. So I'm going to cut these to length and I'm going to leave just a little bit of slack because this can still flex just a tiny bit. And it's also good, you can always cut off more, but you can't really add wire. Not very easily without getting heat shrink and all that jazz. So there's that. And we're just going to strip these. And I did lower the temperature on my soldering iron to a little bit lower. For these, I think 380 is what I'm using. 400 maybe. In those, make sure the solder flows through all of it. And then, it's still pretty hot. And be careful with your iron not to hit any of the plastic signal wires and just solder that onto there. Actually, I did not leave myself enough slack, so goes to show that you should just always have a little extra wire if you have to trim it oh well all right that'll still work though so i'm gonna do the other three all right there we go all four are now done on the pdb with the power wires from the escs soldered up you can see that's pretty nice there just make sure you're getting everything to the right pad and if you have a multimeter now is a good time to check for continuity before you add other layers on because it's very open and easy to check here just as an early precaution. But that's going to be the end of the part one build video here, covering the motors to the ESCs and the ESCs to the BDB, PDB. The next video will be um, doing the rest of the full physical build for the camera, the uh, flight controller, the rest of the frame, you know, the video transmitter, the receiver, fully ready, to, it's fully built. And then part three will be setting up the ESCs and the flight controller and the computer software. So stay tuned for that. I'll leave a link down below to my Patreon if you wish to help support the channel and you enjoy these content um, because it does take quite a bit of effort to produce as well as there will be links to all the separate components of this build down below if you wish to check them out and purchase them as well as the review of the frame and the review of these motors. And please subscribe if you aren't already and I will see you in the next video. Bye.